Hi, Les from Thailand. Welcome to my channel, Retired and Living the Dream. And today's video is going to be about my motorbike. I'm going to sell my motorbike because I'm going to buy a new motorbike. So I'm going to tell you a few things to look out for when you're buying a, a motorbike and the procedure of doing so. So this is my Honda Click. I've had it for nine years and it's just got over 13 and a half thousand kilometers on this. So I'm going to sell it now because I'm looking at a brand new motorbike, a uh, Honda Lead. It's just come out, it's been out a few months. And uh, is there anything wrong with this motorbike? Nothing at all. Um, it goes very well, it's been serviced all the time. Uh, but I'm getting ready to sell it, I'm going to polish the, the plastic on it. And so, so I'm going to be polishing it up whilst I'm talking to you on the, on the video. So, Honda Click. <coughs> this is the Honda Click 125. And um, as I say, like I said before, it's about nine years old now. So it's never, ever let me down. And I've, I've just changed the battery once on it because um, the battery went flat as it is. I mean, it's nine years old at the end of the day. For 13 and a half thousand kilometers and it's always been serviced as and when needed and I've always changed the oil at 2,000 kilometers so the oil is probably the most important thing on, on a motorbike a lot of Thai people basically they just buy a motorbike and uh, and that's it they never change the oil and things like that so but I always do and I look after it and um, as I say, I'm putting it up for sale, and I'm putting it up for sale for <coughs> 25,000 baht. And when I bought it, I think it was just over 49,000 when I bought it uh, nine years or so ago. And it's a bargain for anybody who's looking for a motorbike, as I say, to get one that's been regularly serviced and looked after, as well as this one. Um, they're very, very hard to find because there's no documentation in Thailand with regard to if the bike's been involved in an accident or, or same with a car, if a car's been involved in an accident, there's no documentation to say so. So it's a bit bit like buy beware. Um, I would say if possible, buy a brand new bike as and when possible because with a brand new bike, you know it's never ever been involved in an accident. Now a friend of mine went to buy a second hand motorbike, he was only two years old and um, when he drove it along the street it, it was like crabbing and uh, he took it to a, another garage friend of his who, who dealt with motorbikes and he asked him to look at it and he said it's been involved in an accident and the frames twisted and bent and that's why it was cheap. Um, but if you don't know anything about motorbikes then you just don't know. <coughs> So that's the danger of buying second-hand motorbikes off of people like you, you don't know really. Um, because they could have been involved in an accident and, and bent frames and things like that. So now the motorbike I'm buying, again, is, is another brand new one. But that is the Honda Lead and the cost of that one is... Uh, about 64,000 baht altogether by the time you pay for all of the registration and things like that. So why why am I buying a, another motorbike? As a put, you know, because this one is never ever let me down. It's a good motorbike. It goes well. I, I just like I just like the idea of, of the new shape. I like the new shape. So I'm just making this ready for sale. It'll be just like a brand new motorbike when somebody buys it off me because it's been looked after and what I've done, I've done the back to black with a with the uh, plastic because it's faded. And although we keep it under the sun here, it still is, is liable to, to fade in the sunlight and things like that. So I'm putting a new tire on it. And as I say, when somebody buys this off me, it's just like buying a brand new motorbike because it is absolutely perfect condition the brakes the tires the, everything and with with the insurance for motorbikes over here it's the bike that's insured not the person so the bike is insured up until uh, July of this year and taxed up to July of this year also so 
you know basically once you pay your money there's a transfer fee now because this is in my name this motorbike and it is in a foreigner name i've got to go and get a what's called a, a um, certificate of residence to say that i can sell the motorbike and if you if you buy a motorbike and you want to put it in your foreign name uh, you have to get a, a certificate of residence from the immigration department and that is supposed to be free but invariably the cost it costs you about 500 baht and that's if you want the license you got a certificate of residence if you want to buy a motorbike same thing if you want to sell a motorbike it's the same thing so <sighs> that's just the the administration to be able to do that and then the selling costs to re-register it to somebody else now i'm not too sure of that but I, my wife said in total it's probably less than a, a thousand baht to do all of that lot but i'll go 50 50 with it with a person who, who buys it and you know so twenty-five thousand baht for a, a second-hand motorbike some people might say, oh, nine years old, it's, a, it's an old motorbike. But yeah, it's nine years old, but it's got 13,000 genuine kilometers on it. So it's never been clocked as they do in the UK. So people can buy it with confidence. Now motorbikes here, uh, <coughs> you know, everybody has a motorbike over here that they, you know, for those people who can't afford cars. And especially where I live here, like I said to people who, come round and visited me and looking to to live over here this is what you need you do need a scooter or a motorbike to be able to get around and uh, they are cheap to run very very cheap to run the insurance for this a year including the tax is 600 baht so i'll put the calculations on on the side there for those people for us dollars and euros and things like that but 600 baht a year. <clears throat> now that's basic insurance, third party insurance. Um, you can get fully comprehensive insurance, but for what we use the motorbike for, it's just, just for driving around the local area. And um, it's cheap, it's just cheap as chips. It's just over 100 baht, 120 baht to fill the tank up with petrol. How many kilometers you get for that? I don't know because it's so cheap to fill it up and we, we never really check but um, yeah so my friend came down from Konken and I had a look at it he's got a, a Honda ADV 150cc now this is a 125cc and uh, you can only do 90 kilometers an hour around here anyway and what I do 90 kilometers no we, we do 40 or 50 kilometers an hour we, we only take it slow with this motorbike because it's just not designed for me to go long distances short distances going into town the wife uses it all the time i use it just for, for you know for local trips and things like that going down to 7-eleven saves taking the car when i go down into banpay to go and get me haircut and things like that it's easier to take the motorbike than to to take the car so i'm looking forward to, to the new motorbike because it's a, it's a different shape. I, I like the new shape. We, we talked about it a little while ago. And um, of course, the wife's always going to be interested in a new motorbike. So, so that's why we, we're selling it. And um, there's nothing wrong with it at all. So that's, the, that's what I'm saying. Maintenance here. I, I polished half the motorbike already. So I'll turn the motorbike round and we'll carry on the conversation. So here we go, doing the other side of it now. Have I missed any bits along there? Anybody see any bits I've missed? <laughs> so, living in Thailand, you know, I've been busy this week, and since we come back off holiday, I've had three lots of subscribers down, and, uh, been out for meals and showing people around and things like that and if this is the start of the year um, you know with, with people asking questions and actually coming to view Thailand um, good luck to those people who, who I've, I've met uh, good luck with their future plans but I've got to say 
everybody sort of been impressed with you know with what is is on offer around here because it is a cheap place to live um, but I keep telling people who come here uh, because we're sort of semi-rural although we're five minutes away from the beach you do need transport and one of these is, is ideal you know it's cheap transportation cheap to get around and uh, just you know my wife's got a motorbike and sidecar like a Samlot's called and they're good if you can't afford a car buy a motorbike and sidecar uh, like this motorbike second hand and they just put a Samlot on it you can get a brand new one a brand new Samlot built for 18,000 baht so you basically got a a vehicle that can take up to four or five people and if, if you're only using it local then you can go shopping with it and things like that so living in Thailand you know you don't have to have a lot of money to live here and I've showed that to people you know realistically realistically here even if you're on the small budget of you know like for England, your state pension or something like that, eight or nine hundred pounds a month. You can live not a perfect life over here. Admittedly, you know, you, there's, there's things you'd have, to, you'd have to cut your cloth to suit. But at the end of the day, I think you can live a better life here on your state pension than you could do in the UK. I mean, look, here we are now in January. I'm sat outside here with a T-shirt on and... Um, it's lovely and warm. I'm sat in the shade. Life is good. Life is good, I've got to say. And I don't have to worry about the, the cost of living crisis. You know, the, it's cheap to live here. Food is, is very, very cheap. Just the cost of living is, is cheap here. So we've gone a long way, really, haven't we, from you know, the motorbike we covered a talk about living here but my channel I deal with with lots of people with visa inquiries and things like that and how to live a you know a frugal life here you know you can live a good life here and not a lot of money and I tell people or give advice to people how they can do it how to obtain the, the visa and ways to navigate around the living here in Thailand and uh, I've got to say I've got a lot of interest with people doing that so it's 2024 the time you make the change and the time you think okay I'm gonna bite the bullet and I'm gonna go and I was as I say with January we're into January uh, 20th of January today and um, I've had people who, who pull pull the trigger and have moved from various parts of the world to come and live over here and if that's the sort of trigger point that you know people are going to look at I think 2024 is going to be a big a big part of a lot of people's moves because let's face it everybody's fed up with the cost of living crisis there is no good news you know all around the world and I've got to say in Thailand the feel-good factor is good in fact, all the people that I've talked to over here, the feel-good factor, that, that's the, the number one of what people feel like over here. The crime rate is very low. The cost of living is very low. The cost of uh, accommodation is very, very low. There's nothing highly priced over here. So isn't it nice to be able to live in a country or a location that you don't have to worry about cost of everything, cost of going out for a meal, cost of getting around, because everything, everything is affordable. Remember in the olden days when we were young, everything was affordable then? <laughs> it doesn't appear that way now, does it? You know, all you hear about the costs of going up, going up, going up, the mortgage is going up, although they're supposed to be coming down now. Who knows? And obviously there's an election going on in, in the UK, so now there's going to be plenty of bribery going on with a with the government saying, oh, we'll give you tax. You know, we are the party of doing this and that and the other. 
for how long until they get in again and then as soon as they get in again they'll they'll change the goalposts and tax it again because they're in power again for another five years so the only thing i couldn't get today is the brake levers i wanted to replace them because the paint's coming off but they said it's going to take two weeks to water them so that's that's too long so i've got a new tire how much do you think the tires cost brand new tire uh, including for them to fit it so that's it all ready to, to sell now everything's been done on it it's in perfect condition and um, ready for a new owner <laughs>